Today I'm going to teach you how to use Narcan, um, how to recognize an overdose, and how to use Narcan to reverse the overdose and save the person's life. So the first thing to do in order to know whether or not to Narcan someone uh, is to first be able to tell whether someone is just high or they are overdosing. So most of you have probably seen what it looks like when someone is just high. All that's happening is they are sedating. Their breathing starts to slow down, uh, they might be leaning forward, eyes fluttering, mumbling, and all that's happening is an opioid starts to slow the body down. But the difference between being high and overdosing is usually like a pretty thin line. And all that that difference is, is your breathing slows down to the point where you're not getting enough oxygen or you're not breathing at all. Now we've got an overdose. And all an overdose is, is just the drugs overwhelming the system, right? So that's the opioids overwhelming the receptors and then the breathing slows or stops. You will notice two signs immediately. The first is that their skin color will start to change. So lighter skin folks will turn a bluish gray, their lips will tinge like a blue white gray, darker skin folks will turn like a purple or ashen gray, like the color completely drops out of them, uh, or like they're many shades darker or many shades lighter than they usually are. Sometimes people will be making that a very telltale snore gurgle sound, that is the lungs trying to pull in a full breath, um, but they're unable to, right? Because they're, they're being depressed by the opioids. So when you see those two signs, the first, the skin color changing, and the second, the snore gurgle sounds, um, now you are responding to an overdose. And so the first thing that you want to do is try to simulate them awake. Hey, my friend, you're not breathing. I think you're overdosing. Second kind of simulation is physical simulation. Um, all that is is administering pain. The easiest way to give someone pain is we're going to give them a hard sternum rub. Take your knuckles and rack as hard as you can right on that breastplate. Um, we'll also call it like a chest noogie. Um, so hit them as hard as you can and start yelling their name. Start telling them to wake up. Warn them, hey, if you don't wake up, I'm going to Narcan you. We call that the verbal Narcanning. People who use opioids know exactly what Narcan is. If they don't need it, they don't want it, and they will tell you. Um, please listen to them if they tell you no. If they can say no, they don't need Narcan, right? They're alive, they're breathing. If even the verbal Narcan fails, now you want to move on to Narcanning them. One kit looks like this, and each box has two of these doses, um, and one dose like this is just uh, to be used one time. So what you want to do when it's time is you want to peel back the foil, take the, uh, the dose out, and you want to put it all the way up that person's nose, one click, and it is all good. So you really want to make sure you put it all the way up because that person is not breathing, so they're not inhaling it in order for it to work. Uh, so you want it to go past the nose hairs into the sinuses where it can then absorb uh, into the rest of the bloodstream. We give out the injectable, which is just a vial in a muscling syringe. So you pop that little orange cap off, you draw up out of the vial, and you hit the person either in the thigh muscle or the upper arm muscle. It has to go into a muscle to work. What it also does, if you're familiar with opioids, is that if all those opioids are pulled off the receptor and someone is dependent on opioids, they will experience the symptoms of withdrawal, and they're pretty severe and very traumatizing. If a person is not breathing um, and it has nothing to do with opioids and you give them Narcan, you're not going to hurt them. It just won't do anything. Um, you don't want to give them more than one dose of Narcan to start. The more Narcan you give someone, the sicker they're going to be when they wake up. Um, and it won't make it work any faster. So if I hit someone with three doses right out of the gate, it's still going to take two to three minutes to start working. And they may wake up feeling like shit for no reason other than you panicked. After Narcanning them, now you want to perform rescue breathing. This is super simple. Just get that person flat on their back, tilt their chin up, pinch their nose, one breath, turn and watch their chest rise. Give one breath every five seconds. Um, so in the time of COVID, right, we've gotten a lot of questions about how crucial is rescue breathing. And so we do want to name that um, it is pretty crucial because the one thing they're missing is oxygen. And before there was this thing called Narcan, overdose prevention trainings were all about performing rescue breathing. And also, um, if you're listening to this and you're like, I am not the one to do rescue breathing, just know that you might also surprise yourself with the lengths that you are willing to go when someone is not breathing and not responsive in front of you.
And so you're breathing for them, you're waiting for the Narcan to work. If you're comfortable calling 911, this is when you do it. You wanna get the Narcan in before you get on the phone with 911. You know, they ask you like 7,000 questions. You don't know any of the answers to them. You just need them to get there. But they could also be not breathing and not responsive for any number of reasons. Um, so sometimes calling 911 and just knowing you have medical backup on the way um, is really helpful. Um, so just keep it very simple, name if you're comfortable, location, and just that person is not breathing and not responsive. After Narcaning someone, there is this myth around Narcan that when you uh, Narcan someone, they're going to wake up pissed um, and they're going to wake up swinging. Uh, so what we want to assure you that at the DOPE Project, for all of our 17 years of doing our work, we have never heard of someone just waking up violent. Really what's ha happening for folks is that they are super disoriented. So a bunch of things are slamming into them all at once. Questions like, who are you? Where am I? Where's my stuff? Where's my friends? Are you a cop? Did you call the cops? Um, are you gonna treat me differently? And what's really happening for them is when they're waking up, they're waking up flat on their back, violently dope sick, surrounded by a group of terrified strangers, some of whom are in uniform, some of whom are holding them down. Um, and I don't know about you, but if that were me, that I would also try to get away. And that is when labels like combative or resistance are put upon our people. So waking up from an overdose can be very disorienting. People do not feel good. They are terrified. They're traumatized. Um, and so as people start to wake up, give them some space and gently start talking to them, right? Tell them what happened. Hey, my friend, my name is Kristen. You just overdosed. We had to Narcan you. I'm so sorry you don't feel good. Hey, my friend, this is Francis. Uh, you're here at this location. We saw you weren't breathing. We think you were overdosing. I'm so sorry. I had to give you some Narcan. Um, I know you don't feel good right now. Sit up when you're ready. I got you. You're safe. You're safe. You're okay. I got you, right? We call this welcoming someone back into consciousness. Um, and just keep on repeating that over and over to them until that person is fully awake. And so then from there, you're just supporting them. Narcan stays bound to the receptors for about 90 minutes. Um, and then it'll start to wear off after about 20 to 30 minutes and people will start to feel a little better. Um, we recommend keeping an eye on folks for at least an hour and a half just to make sure they don't go back into the overdose. But for the most part, um, once people wake up, um, and get past that window, they are just fine. People who use drugs experience so much stigma uh, for being a person who uses drugs. Um, and so something you can do to um, kind of uh, alleviate that stigma is just be like, hey, my friend, I'm so glad you are alive. Um, remember, nothing changes between us because what you just experienced was a medical emergency. Um, and then remember to be gentle with yourself um, and be gentle with them. Um, yeah, because you just went through it. And then be sure to take care of yourself afterwards as well because you just saved a life.